on with reproduction and we're looking more specifically at the structure and function of the male and female reproductive organs. The male reproductive organs hang outside the body whereas the women's reproductive organs are inside the body. So here we have the structure of the male reproductive organs and where we've talked about the sperm before which are the gametes they're produced inside the testes. Inside the testicle is singular and testes is plural. Now the sperm are made 24 hours a day seven days a week and they then need to be stored somewhere because clearly they're not being used all the time so they get stored in this tube here which has a really cool name it's called the epididymis and they're stored there for about three days after about three days they begin to break down and your white blood cells recognize them as foreign because they only have 23 chromosomes in there and they destroy them so they're constantly being made they're constantly being replaced and they're constantly being refreshed now ultimately when they're released outside of the body that is called ejaculation ejaculation however doesn't just contain the sperm it contains some fluids because right now these sperm don't have anything to uh, swim in they don't have any liquids and for them to passage through these tubes they go by like a squeezing action a bit like when you squeeze toothpaste out of a tube <laughs> And this tube is called the sperm duct, but it also has a much fancier name. It's called the vas deferens. Vas deferens with an S on the end, because whereas we've got two testicles, we've got testes, we've also got two sperm ducts. So we've got two vas deferens. As the def vas deferens come along here and the peristalsis movement is squeezing the sperm along, fluid gets added to the sperm from both this gland here called the seminal vesicle and this gland here called the prostate gland. Now you don't really need to know the names of those, you just need to know in essence that some liquid is added to them. However, you may have heard of the prostate gland before because whereas a lot of women get breast cancer, a lot of men get prostate cancer especially later on in life when they reach their 70s or 80 years of age. And very often the first time that they realize that they've got a problem is that they go to go to the toilet and they can't because this prostate gland has swollen so much, it's squashing against this tube here. Now, if you look to where this tube connects, it connects to the bladder. So what actually happens is the swelling in the prostate gland cuts off the flow of urine through this tube here, which is called the urethra. And although the male will go to the toilet and think he wants to have a wee, he can't actually have a wee and he ends up in quite a lot of pain. And it's only then that he normally seeks medical attention and then that they find out perhaps he has prostate cancer. So here we've got the penis which hangs outside of the body and basically it's a tool to insert sperm or semen, now as it's called, mixed in with the liquids, into the vagina of the female and it's made of spongy tissue. Um, and that spongy tissue will harden and become erect when more blood flows into it. Now, you need to be familiar with the diagram looking at the male reproductive organs from the side view, but also from the front view. Now, here we have the front view of the male reproductive organs, and it's on this view that we're better able to see what's called the foreskin. The foreskin is a piece of skin that that protects the top end of the penis and sometimes it's removed for religious reasons or sometimes as the male grows and goes through puberty it can become too tight and in a very simple operation it's removed and that operation is called circumcision. So 
So here we have a diagram of the female reproductive organs and it's unusual to see a diagram from the side because it just looks so much more complicated from the side. Here we've got the vagina which is where the sperm will sit and it will release the um, semen here. And this is the uterus otherwise known as the womb and this is where the blood builds up every month waiting for a fertilised egg to embed into it. And also, if a fertilised egg is um, implanted into the lining, this is the area where the baby will grow. Further along these tubes, these tubes are called the fallopian tubes, or they're also called the oviduct. And the ovary here is the place where the, fer the female eggs will develop and one a month be released. And so when the egg is released from the ovary, it falls into the fallopian tube and it usually gets fertilised in the upper reaches of the fallopian tube, either this side or this side. If the egg gets to about here and it hasn't been fertilised, then already the egg is too old and what's going to happen is it's going to pass out of the female. Now that's not like a chicken laying an egg, you can't see it, a female doesn't look down into the toilet and see that an egg has gone down there. It's, this, it's about 0 0.2 of a millimetre in diameter and it's something that um, the female would not notice. So once puberty has taken place, eggs are then mature enough to be released one a month and that process carries on until a period of time called menopause and that usually takes place around the age of 50 but it can happen a lot earlier or even later. This place here called the cervix you might have also heard of that before sometimes female they may get cervical cancer it's very rare um, but you might have heard of people who go for smear tests and what they do in a smear test is they remove a small amount of the cells from there and they test them to see if they're normal uh, because if you do get cancer of the cervix then it's normally quite an aggressive cancer. Obviously this uterus wall must be very muscular and it must be very elastic because when the baby does grow it's going to stretch something that's the size of a female's fist into something the size of a basketball and later on you'll learn more about menstruation in other words female periods but the blood where that comes from is here it lines the uterus and then every month during menstruation, the lining sheds and it passes out of the vagina. Now, earlier on in year seven, you learned about ciliated cells. These are cells with projections of cytoplasm and they can waft, they can move. Now, you also find these cells in the oviduct or the fallopian tube. When the egg is ovulated, when the egg bursts out of the ovary, each month, these ciliated cells gently waft the egg down the fallopian tube towards the uterus. Okay, so just looking at the sperm cell in a bit more detail, we always know that it's streamlined and it's a specialised cell, but it still has its normal features. It still has a cell membrane which goes all the way around the cell. It still has a nucleus. It still has cytoplasm. It still has a mitochondria. Remember, mitochondria are where respiration takes place. And then it has some specialized features. It is streamlined. Its head is shaped to help it swim um, through liquid with very little resistance. Its tail will continue to move in a spiral fashion due to the mitochondria and on the top of the sperm cell there's an enzyme in a piece called the acrosome and what that does is it helps to penetrate the egg and when that acrosome releases its enzymes and the enzymes help to burrow into the outside of the egg and then nuclei from the sperm cell moves in and fuses with the female nuclei something almost magical happens and a barrier is formed around the whole of the outside 
of the female egg to prevent further male sperm being able to penetrate it. So now what you need to do is construct a table, both for the male and one for the female, whereby you list the structures of the reproductive organs and next to them you list their function. And you need to learn this. No!